Okay, good afternoon everyone. I was thrilled to manage this. Good evening. Good evening. I want to say the best step to get. Don't forget to stay or being having faith in yourself. Yeah, thank you very much. I want to talk about self-confidence. Self-confidence is a lot of boldness. The act of boldness. My name is Simeon. Simeon. Self-confidence is the act of believing in yourself to be able to do that. The act of believing in yourself. Thank you very much, Simeon. All right. My name is Simeon. Self-confidence is the act of being able to show that you can do something. The ability that you can do something. Okay, thank you very much. Can you tell us practical examples of how you apply self-confidence between November and this is February? So about say give or take two full months in between. Practical applications, an example of how you apply self-confidence. Practical example. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Rodiban. How do I apply self-confidence and strength? Okay, so what I'm asking is, for example, um, how I apply self-confidence today. Let me give you an example. It's not the whole example. So before now, coming to Ikorodo in November, I would need to check my Google Maps to know how to get to Ikakodo Grammar School. But over time, I understood the necessary buses to enter or to board. So I get to board the bus going to mile 12 from where I'm coming from, and I get to board the bus coming to Ikorodo, and I light at Obolonto. But for this bus stop is Idi Roko. So the problem for me to be able to know where I'm going to without having to use the Google map is a practical example of how I apply self-confidence. To say that I'm able to wake up, leave my house in good time, beat the traffic, is an example of how I apply self-confidence. Another example is me speaking to us. So if Kojingra comes to say that, you know, we're expecting 500 people today, I'm, I'm confident that I'll be able to talk to 500 people. I would have to use a public address system because not everybody will hear, not the entire 500. But I'm confident that I'll be able to communicate the truth in simple terms so that at least you will understand a concept. Even if it's not the entire self-confidence, you understand what boldness is, what strength or what opportunities are. Do we understand? That's a practical example that I'm able to communicate effectively this knowledge to you and you're able to understand better. So, from our friends from Ikakodo Grammar School, um, between November when you learnt it, you wrote your exams, you went home for the holidays, you resumed, what are practical examples of how you applied self-confidence? And I'm sure that you all, um, some of you partook in some of the tournaments, right? Okay, so, give us practical examples. Like, for me to read my book and to read my book for the exam at the school. As a practical example for me to get my results, the results are complete. So the confidence with which you read your books to prepare for exam is an example that you have this. Okay, tell us your name. My name is Tim Thank you. Okay. For learning and culture. For learning and culture. Okay. In what area? Is it for your sports? For your academics? At home? Okay, so give a practical example. Okay, so how many of you here actually played cricket last year? You played cricket last year. So if you played cricket last year, just tell us an example of how you apply self-confidence on the field. Let's start with that. My name is Ibrahim. To approve my self-confidence in the field by add my identity to play the match. I have to stand strong to add my field. Because how they throw the ball to me is very hard for me to face. But by how my coach taught me how to play, I'm very strong to play. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. <laughs> okay, so for our friends from Government College, there are a couple of there are a couple of guidelines that you need to understand about self confidence. So when you are asked a question in class and you think you have an idea of it. You are scared to actually raise your hand to answer because you are you don't want anybody to laugh at you. Has that happened to anybody from government college? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Has that happened to any of you? Yes, sir. What is maybe some of you? I think not some of you. You have an idea of it, but you are 
Now, when you come outside and you accept, and the teacher says, oh, your answer is correct, will you be happy that your answer is correct? Yes. And the teacher says everybody should clap for you, right? Yes. And you're happy about that. But however, if you don't get it correctly, that's not the end of, nobody is going to expel you. Nobody will tell you that, you know, that means you cannot answer any other question. So I want to encourage us, as people are here in class, I want you to maintain decorum. You have any questions, raise your hand. If everywhere is quiet, I get to hear the response. Do we understand? And I believe in everybody here, and I believe in the fact that you're all obedient students. Now, so when I make a statement, and whether it's funny or not, we are not here to laugh. We're here to actually focus on this. And I'll tell you the reason why Brighter Future and Drive Online came together. We came together because we understood clearly that, of course, we understand what's happening on YouTube or social media about the vices or the seriously organized crimes of whatever you think you, you have in mind. Realize that for people to actually participate in these crimes, it needs to start from one city. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. My eyes are on everyone. Listen carefully. So a crime did not just start up. It started from bad habits that led to, or bad behaviors that sprung up to bad habits because you were doing them consistently, and you just want to make money and you want to earn a living. Now, I understand that there's so much happening in the country. So much. But we are not saying that you're all going to be defined by what's happening in the country. And we're not going to pronounce that over the bright future that you all have. So you are seeing all of this happening on the streets of Lagos, the streets of your community. But you know that there is much more to you. The reason why your parents believe in you to be in school is because they know you can have a better future than what you're seeing out there. So we are coming to tell you that these vulnerability pillars that you've listed, this the sense of purpose, the self-confidence, the critical thinking, the masculinity, and even the social network and social capital, which I'll explain further on, is very important. Now, if I want to, let me use the word, if I want to fell a tree, because you, you do not fall a tree, you fell a tree. If, you, if I want to fell a tree, um, I can't do it alone. But if there's a mechanism where it requires, say, 50 people to push it together, I have more than enough, more than 50 people here that would support me in doing it. Do we understand? Yes. Now, I can't reach out. I learned that there are over 1 million people in the Kurudu. Over 1 million people. So give or take, I'm saying that there are over 100,000 youths in the Kurudu. And this is me just giving a 10% estimate. But I'm not able to reach out to the entire 100,000 youths. But what I'm doing is, I'm doing well to reach out. We are doing well to reach out to 50 here, 100 there. A hundred years, fifty years. So imagine if one person, each of you, you are able to be influenced positively and you understand fully well the purpose why you're here in school or why you're a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If in turn, each person reaches out to hundred people as well. In total, how many people would we reach if one person reaches out to, to hundred persons and these hundred persons reach out to hundred persons each? How many people would we reach in turn? Hundred times hundred. If you're confident of the answer, just raise your hand. If you're confident of the answer, just raise your hand. How much? Ten thousand. Thank you, Chinna. So we'll be able to reach up to ten thousand people. Now, nobody will come to directly tell you that there is um, the YBX on the field of cricket. But there's a lot of mental grit and calculation and deduction that you have to do on the field. You know, the captain mentioned, mentioned that he had to build his self-confidence because there's a way the ball will be thrown. The force and their, their tools with which they will be able to calculate the speed at which the, the ball was released or the speed at which the ball was flying. But of course, you won't know that yet, but you'll get there gradually. You will. And when you eventually get there, you would realize that, oh, I'm glad that I had the right, right foundation towards mathematics. Do you understand? So this mathematics, the English you study, the biology, integrated science, physics, maths, economics, social study, they all add up. Because you might not practically apply them on the field, 
but you play against other schools. I look forward to seeing Government College play against um, Ipakodo. I look forward to Ipakodo playing against Mighty Pillars. I look forward to Mighty Pillars playing against Ishao. Because we all have to strengthen each other. Do we understand? Do we understand? Yes. And that is why Brighter Futures is here to say that, okay, good. Do these students understand self confidence? If I want to tell that anybody understands self confidence. So um, let me say for me, Pakodo um, Grammar School, can anybody come out here to speak for one hour to teach us about self confidence? Can anybody? You'll come to talk to us for one hour on self confidence. Maybe you're not able to get that yet, but gradually you will get there. So I'm told that, oh, yes, some people have learned self confidence. And you know, I was just speaking with Coach Ingram, who says, you know, can we just talk about something different from what um, you all know? And I was just thinking on my feet and I said, yeah, I think I know what to tell them. Social network and social capital. Social network and social capital. Let me give an example. How many of you have devices here? You have a phone, you have a computer. How many, how many, how many? You have your name. So if anyone wants to send you a DM, you just slide into your DM and say, oh, hello, for example, your name is Coyote. Hello, Coyote, or um, if your name is Wilfred. Hello, Wilfred, how are you doing? You're not scared to reply because it's your device, right? You're not scared to reply because that's your name, right? What's your first name, for instance? Read one. If, for example, I come into the class, read one, and you're reading a book, and I say, hello, read one, how are you doing? And you just tell me you're fine, you're not scared because your name is read one, and you're reading your book. You've not done anything wrong. Do you understand? So this self-confidence that we're doing to do well to communicate to you is, um, it, is that it should be applied both to your school work, both to the field, both to your relationship with the community. And community being hospitals, prisons, um, the wardens, the people selling, name it. The, the churches, the mosques, your parents, their friends, you get to apply this, even interacting with the teachers. Some of you might take the role of being a teacher, might not be a teacher within the four walls of the classroom. So I'm not directly teaching you between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m., but I'm get, getting to teach you these soft skills that will help you um, far beyond the four walls of the classroom, into the field, and into your community. So classroom, field, community, you need to apply self-confidence. And for those in government college today, I learned that some um, um, personnel came today. Some important dignitaries came today, right? Is that correct? Yes. And the entire school had to prepare for their arrival, right? Yes. Good. And you're told that you know you must be dressed neat, you must be in your best behavior, right? Yes. Now, if for example everybody is dressed neat, 99 people dress neat, and one person either is wearing mufti or one person is not in his school uniform. Um, will that person be confident to come out to greet either the Minister of Education or will the person be confident? You know what we might think? We would think that is this person a student of the school? But the reason why you all are seated here and the access you have is because you're all on your jersey. So, and there's a time for everything. So, even if you are in your school uniform, you know what the coach will ask you? Where's your jersey? Because the time for you to wear your school uniform has lapsed. Now it's time for you to get into your jersey. So for those that know our football players, you know our football players, right? Yes. You know, in, and some of them are brand ambassadors. The Mercies, the Ronaldos, name them. The Neymar, the Mbappe. Now, they are star players, quite right? But do you think um, Mbappe will just wear a Pepsi shirt and go and play against Brazil? No, right? Because he has to wear in a jersey that represents his country. Is that correct? Yes. So no matter how, how beautiful or how neat your clothes is, if you're not dressing for the right occasion, you won't be given permission. Do you understand? So the invitation that you accepted is that you want to learn how to play cricket, but there are certain guidelines that you need to abide by. Do we understand? Okay, good. So now that we've laid that foundation, let's come to learn again. And for those from Ipakodo, it's a good opportunity for learn this to, to learn these things again and ask questions. All right, so, the value that you are and the value that you have.
Another practical illustration. Last December, last November into December, at Ipakodo Grammar School, there was a tournament where two teams played. Um, a particular team had higher, higher score more than the second team. In other terms, they would say one team won the game. Now, how many of you were part of the second team that did not win the game? You're part of the second I, I want you to tell us a practical illustration. Now, I remember telling you all that you don't have self-confidence. You were not happy that particular day, right? Yes. You cried. Yes. But are you still crying till today? No. So let's let me so Simeon, share with us. So how did you overcome that feeling of not crying every time? And after that day, did you stop playing cricket? No, sir. Okay, so share with us. Just face the class. Tell us your name and okay. Um the way I overcome my fear of crying and the depression of losing the game when I ought to win a bat and I got a medal. So um my family and friends helped me well. Um also the other participants that won the game, they helped me, they tried to share their bats with me. They did not make me feel sad. Okay. They tried to lose my Okay, thank you so much, Simeon. Somebody else say. Thank you, Simeon. Okay. Rakiba, please come to share with us. From people who have met about the self-confidence, so we'll share with you. So what they are sharing with us is, oh. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Rakiba. How I overcome my fear that I don't win mean the game is because of, I don't put my concentration on the game. And I was so happy that I won the medal because I don't want the medal in my life. <laughs> do we remember what? Do you remember that? Yes. You know, when someone is speaking, no just then. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I was so very happy, but at that time I was very sad because my other get bad. So I cannot. I, I know I'm not happy that I didn't get bad. So when later not to I should be happy that I not to that I was the point. And then, what is my that I don't start? I enter the pride. Nothing that enter the pride that I'm going to give them back so that they should play at our school. So I was very happy that all my friends used to share our back with us to play in our school every quick time to do training. So I was able to overcome my fear that one day so that I'm going to collect. A part of my own now, so that this is my part. I know what able to collect from me. Okay, and when you have a part, will you be able to share with people? Yes. Yes, good. Thank you. One more person. You want to share with us? Be confident. Share with us. I want to talk about the day I overcome the fear. I was not part of those that was yeah, because coach said we have not joined since now. So he put a wrong button. They were like crying, so some students, one of them, the senior was not telling me why they're crying, that some they played, they did not cry, that they should not cry. Alright, are we together in this? I like what Bodo Atifair shared, thank you so much for sharing with us Bodo Atifair. So, um... Um, for the people that didn't win the game, and Budwa Tefer shared a very important example. You know, the people, two teams played, but not everybody participated. Not the entire hundred of you will be on the field at the same time. Not the entire hundred of you will be on the field at the same time. So, um, do we know this? I learned this in a particular school. Eyes on me. Eyes on the speaker. So listen carefully. There are many metrics that will look at and give a report about your behavior in class and give you a report about how well you paid attention to these lessons learned. Now, some people played and some people did not play. So the people that were crying, they at least got a medal. They would go to work better on what they were not perfect at, to be better players or to be um, better confident players. And those of them that did not play are still looking for an opportunity to at least play. So, you know, just the way they play quarterfinals, a couple of persons are saying that, ah, you know, they play quarterfinals and they lost out, they didn't proceed to the semifinals. But at least they were qualified to even play the quarterfinals in the first place. Now, what are your strengths? From Government College. 
Can we just leave that? From Government College. Um, strength. What is strength? Strength is either a natural endowment or an ability for you to be able to achieve a task effectively, efficiently. Government College? Okay. That was it. Read one. Confidence. Okay. Is confidence a strength? Well, you call it a strength. Confidence. Okay. Speak louder. Daniel. Okay. Agility. Agility. Okay. Okay. My name is Physical Fitness. Physical Fitness. Government College? Yes. What was your name? Okay. Tell us. Focus. Focus. Okay. Tell us your name. Samuel. Ad work. Ad work. Well, I will, we will not qualify that as a strength. That's a good attempt. Yes, tell us your name. Louder. Daniel. Courage. Mm. Okay. This thing. With time, we'll be able to refine what we understand as strength. Okay, tell us your name. Pardon? Destiny. High self esteem. Okay. Rudyard. Flexibility. No, no, no. I'm, not, I'm, I'm addressing the fact that you need to focus in class and allow every other person to speak. That you know something doesn't mean that every other person knows it. Do you understand? He told me this, and I really agree with him 100%. That we are talking about, we can point fingers at the people who are out there, either the leaders or the, the youths on the streets, but they didn't get there in one day. It started with indiscipline. So if everybody's disciplined and focused, we'll be able to pay attention. Eyes on me, Daniel. There's a reason why we came here. If you all paid for this program, you better sit up. So as much as it's free, it's entirely me not take it for granted. Oh, great. Can you give an example of strength? Our teachers. Pardon? Our teachers. Tell us your name first. David. David. An example of strength. Motivation. 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 Another, another example. Please like this. Thank you. Focus. Focus. Okay, thank you. Tell us your name. Give different examples aside from what someone else said. I like what you wrote on the board of the internet. You said, think outside the shape. Or name of animal, name of animal. Yes. When you're playing that game, you know you have to speak fast. Yes. Like say for example, four people. You speak fast, you speak. Now, just translate that energy in playing that game into the game of cricket or into your everyday activity where you're required to think fast. That one was for fun, nobody will pay you. But you, you would supply the answers and nobody, everybody wants to win. And you know sometimes someone has in mind, maybe for example, you want to say, um, say you want to say, Ola Jide, you don't be like, and you know everybody laughs, you're out of the game. Do you understand? Yes. Before you step into that field, you have to be confident that you're going there to win. Before you step into that field, you have to be confident that you win. In the society, there is no room for bullies. Because no matter how far you want to be a bully, you can't be a leader as a bully. And you don't necessarily need to be a bully because you are big or you have strength. But even in the laughing and the jesting and you know in teasing people and talking down on people, you're bullying them. You are far more valuable together.
because you're a team. You have strengths, you have opportunities, you have responsibilities. And I'll just break it down for you. The strengths you have are things that you will get to build upon daily to help you better the game. The opportunities you have, number one, if you are not a student of this school, or if you are not a student in a school, there's no way you'll be here. I would not just cross over to the other side and call people who are riding bicycles or motorbikes to come be a part of this program. It's not for them. An opportunity like Coach said that you would want to have meetings with teachers, principals, parents, guidance. That's an opportunity that you have. So first start with the local tournament before you move to the state tournament, before moving to the national tournament and international tournament. Those are opportunities that you have. So you're not competing amongst each other, no. You're competing with yourself because you want to be better daily. After all, when you're writing the exam, there is no other person beside you competing. You just get to give you positions based on your performance in class. Do you understand? And the responsibilities that you have is that, number one, you're expected that to have good behavior. You're expected to be disciplined. You're expected to be punctual. Because, like I've learned from my father, he mentioned and he told me that, you can't just, I can't just tell you that, you know, um, stop coming late. I can't keep announcing stop coming late or stop wearing dirty clothes. What I need to do is to encourage you with a good habits that you can emulate. Give you advantages. What are the advantages of coming early? Either to class or to the field. What are the advantages of wearing good dresses or neat dresses? What's the advantage of combing your hair daily, taking your bath daily, brushing your teeth daily? We want to avoid the body odors. We want to avoid the concerns by teachers calling us to order. Do we understand? So the ability for you to understand all of this would help you advance, not just being a good citizen of the country, but you taking on different skills. So you can take a skill in tech, in agriculture, you can come up with a business idea. You can write a book and approach someone who possibly has the funds to publish the book. And they will publish the book. But it takes that ability for you to know that I'm valuable to my society, I'm valuable to my community, I'm valuable to my family. And you don't need to go meet coach to say, hey coach, I'm valuable. We will see it, it's like fragrance. If someone comes here and you know um, sprays, um, say, um, Smart Collection perfume, just right, right here where I'm standing. It just takes the wind to carry this fragrance to the end of the room and you all will perceive it. That's the way it is with your nature and your character. You know, an adage in the Yoruba language says that character is like vapor, character is like smoke. People will always get to see it. Do we understand? Yes. All right. So um, I mentioned that I was going to take two topics. I was not around last Thursday, and I really wish I could be around. My sincere apologies. I want to take self-confidence, and I also want to take critical thinking. Critical thinking. And I want to be mindful of that. You know, when they say two plus two, what do you have? That's the example they would give in class. That's the um, classwork you would do. That's the assignment you would do. In the exam, you'll be told um, two boys and two girls are in class. What is the ratio? of boys in the class. So two boys and two girls are in the class. What's the ratio of boys in the class? Simeon? Two ratio four. And when you break it down, two ratio four, and you can also get to break it up. One ratio two. Right? You have to think about this. But someone can go out there to say that, oh, they didn't teach me this in class. On the field, what you are going to learn on the field during practice is entirely different from what you will learn or from what you will play against another school, against another institution. Do you understand? 
let me give another example. Um, how many of us, okay, well, I know many of us know that different football clubs have different coaches, right? So how your coach will teach you or teach a football team or a cricket team is different from how another coach will teach another cricket team. But it is the same fundamentals, right? For example, you go for a debate. Do we go for school competitions here? Yes. We go for school competitions yes. and they get to ask you questions in mathematics. They get to ask you questions in science. Different questions, right? Now, um, you won't tell the moderator that, you know, did he teach me this in school? Why? Because it is expected that you've learned the fundamentals of either mathematics, do you understand? Or you've learned the fundamentals of science. So the same curriculum that we are we're working with in this school is the same curriculum that is being used in Akodo or in Majidon or in Ishao or in Mighty Pillars. Do we understand? So we are telling us that we want you to critically understand what it means to work with the fundamentals. And on this critical thinking, we'll talk about the we will talk about our big thinking versus what? Thinking. Our friends from Ikakodo have an understanding about it and they will share with us again. Think big versus thinking, thinking. How many of you like to repeat classes? How many of you like to repeat classes? Nobody. Does anybody want to repeat class? No. Do you want to repeat a class? No, right? But when you're told that you're given an assignment, I don't mean. When you're told that you're meant to do your assignments, or you're meant to show up for tests, or you're meant to show up for exams, and you do none of them. Don't you think that people are laying foundation for repeating a class? Yes. So when the coach says, show up early by 2.45 or by 3 o'clock for you to be able to gain the right knowledge, the soft skills that you need on the field, and you don't show up at all because you're a skilled player, you're strong, you can play cricket for six hours non-stop, or you can play football for six hours non-stop, it's just a matter of time before you face out. It's just a matter of time because what will happen is that your inability to show up will affect the overall performance of the team. You remember in school when you see results, there's something called class average. Yes. Right? Yes. So it's meaning that everybody's performance matters. So if I am scoring a 94 and the class average is say 60, meaning that a couple of people are either not being taught well or some people are just choosing not to either follow up on the reading because if I'm scoring in 94 and the class average is 60, it means that, okay, it means that the teacher is doing the job well, it means that I understand well, but what's happening to the many members of the class or the team? You remember some of those football games where a defender makes a mistake and you call it an own goal? And if there was no other goal for the match, that team has lost because the defender was not accurate enough to knowing either how to pass or how to kick the ball that it would avoid the net or the goal post. So the art of you not doing what you should do consistently is that's thinking, thinking. Where, you know, you feel like you do not do your assignments and like I would say, because you don't want to be punished, you just choose not to show up in school. Or like some of the guys want to do, you want to stab a class or you want to scale the fence. Now, the maximum number of years you can scale your first is six years. Because one day, either the school will get to tell you that you've graduated, or they get to suspend, or they get to expel. Likewise, the, the um, game of cricket as well. You won't, be a, this, you won't be a teenager forever. You won't be a youth forever. So, make good use of the time. Make good use of the time. Nobody here might be up to 30 years, but one day you will get to 30 years. And everything you do sums up to how well you'll be enjoying your life when you're 30 years, or when you're 50 years, or when you're 100 years. Depending on how well or how well it's destined for you to live. But that ability for you to do those assignments, that classwork, you know sometimes even when you're doing it and they ask that, oh, how many of you have done the assignment and you raise your hand? And you know some of your classmates will give some, some um, sneakery comments to say, ah, are you the only one? Oh yeah, you might be the only one now because you guys will not be here forever. 
and we're saying, oh, let's all go early for the cricket game. And we're wondering, why should we go early for the cricket game? That, what exactly are they teaching us there? But actually, what happens when a couple of people, maybe it's next 11, are taken out to represent the school or to represent the country, it almost feels like people are jealous. Now, why do they choose them and why not me? But we said, everybody show up. Everybody is giving equal opportunity. I don't know anybody to call them. Gentlemen, if you said before, any of you, for those in the back of that, I just met them in the back. So it's not like I'm coming from you and I said, ah, I've seen you in the bus before, that you didn't visit me in the bus. So I will pick on you. I'm not picking on anyone. I just want everybody to understand clearly why they're here. So know in your heart why you're here. So that when I come next week, next week, Thursday, by 2.45 we start, and at 2.30 everybody's seated. Everybody's seated. The young man with his head on the desk. Pay attention. I know that it's quite tiring. I know that you are attending classes in two, two. But this is a push. This is the only time you will get this push in your life. Where you will like 10 subjects or 15 subjects. And you expect them to attend all your good courses. You know why? Because the school believes in you. The school believes that your mind is very sharp. And you can absorb a lot of knowledge. And still retain that knowledge. Oh, another reason why you can absorb this knowledge and retain this. The ability for you to write down. Take notes of your questions. Write them down. There's something else we should talk about here. That you should ask questions from others. And finally, actions, inactions, and their effect. How many of you play chess? You play chess. So it was good that, okay, well, I thought that was a man, that's a woman. What's her name? Siri. Okay, Miss Siri. Damn, Siri. What's her name? Shebo. So Shebo and Dami Siri play chess. We should get the chess game and it's just that chess will take a long time. Right? Because it's quite strict to come That's one example. And then you know, the first thing to come is problem. And what happens is that it helps you feel more better. So I look through, and the example I give is, um, I see actions and inactions alike. So what happens when you don't take your bath for three days? Body odor. Body odor. What happens when you take your bath consistently for three days? Have you observed that sometimes when you're very tired and you just take a shower, it just refreshes you? Or sometimes when you have a headache, you drink water and you sleep and you, feel, you understand that you feel better. Now, if you don't feel better, they say, oh, you need to visit the doctor. But when you've gone through a lot of stress, those, those impact on your body. Next thing I will get to see, and the illustration I like to give, is about your bones. If you've broken a bone before, and you don't get to fix it right, what happens is, in the process of you fixing right, it feels like it's more pain. But if you don't fix it right, there's a deformity for life. And it will be worse still than the pain that you have to go through when you have to correct that bone. So in this society that you belong to, you'll be offered options to either take bad behavior or take bad habits. And hey, beware, evil communication corrupts good manners. Evil communication, it corrupts good manners. So you can't say you want to be a good boy and a bad boy at the same time. Or you want to be a good girl and a bad girl at the same time. Eyes on me. All you need to do is to consistently understand that in order for me to disdain from this seriously organized crime, it starts from me watching the attitude I give to myself. It starts from my behavior, it starts from my habits before it becomes a part of my life and before it leads to a crime. So what do I need to do? Likewise, I also need to watch the good attitude I display towards instructions 
towards obedience to some of these commands that were given. And I can tell, while growing up as well, it happened to me. Focus. Focus. You know, I felt like I was growing, I was strong, and you know, I had some of my aunties around, and I felt, I felt like I could just talk to them. The concern was not whether they could beat or not. Because according to Newton's third law of motion, to every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So for people that fight, for people that fight, for those that fought before, have you observed that, you know, while you're fighting, you know, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline pumped up, it beats the person anyhow. But after two hours, it feels like your hand is paining you. And you're wondering like, what happened to you? That's what happens. It was that understanding that stopped me from fighting because I realized that why would I want to, you know, jab to my center and in a bit of sharp jabbing, so maybe I miss a shot and I hit the wall like, and I bruise my finger. What's the essence? As to fighting, why can't I channel that strength that I have to fight in towards playing cricket or towards playing football or towards um, engaging my mind by, by watching documentaries or reading articles? Because you know what? There won't be an excuse to say that, oh, I didn't know. Because you all have access to the internet. When you can, you all have access to the internet. So the strength you have towards you know, fighting people, and if you ask yourself, what's the reason why you fought that person? You see maybe they, they abused your father or your mother, or they abused you or your family, or they took something that didn't belong to you. Because if you truly ask yourself, was it worth that fight? Was it worth the all of that energy? The answer is no. But ego and pride will not allow a couple of people to let go. And a couple of people have engaged themselves in that, and the effect is, oh, oh, they were arrested and they were thrown in prison. And the regret is, I did just control their, their strength, control that temper. The effect theory, we are preferring to you to say, you can learn these vulnerability pillars. The way the captain was, was chosen last year, each one of you can be a mentor to at least a hundred people in your community. There are other children on the streets. There are come some of your friends who are at home that are not going to school. You know them. There's an academy that we're planning to say that, okay, you know what? We're building a, a grand academy for the youth in the Korodu. I believe that every one of you can engage your strengths there. What's happening to read one? Focus. And like I said, I do understand that it's been a stretch. But note this. Um, for example, those from government college, you're hearing some of the persons from Ipagodo Grammar School, and I'm really encouraged, go through their notes, I will read what they learned from November. Now, nobody can steal this knowledge from you. You've learned it, it becomes a part of you. And I need to close now. It has become a part of you. So when you're facing, when you have any, any challenge, you know, some persons ask me questions, you're facing any challenge, whether in cricket, you can always walk up to coaching Graham. You can always walk up to him to ask him questions. You know what? He's more than willing to answer you. To ask you no nonsense questions. <laughs> <laughs> Says it with questions in cricket alone. And you say, oh, coach, I came across this online. Like, what method is this? Oh, coach would be impressed to say that, oh, far beyond your field, you're also going on to make research about how to be a better cricket player. For those in Ipakodo Grammar School, they got the assignment last, last year. And for those in Government College now, and do these assignments and write this down. Like, what are the strengths I need to play cricket? Are there football players here? No, it's just, just cricket. 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 100 cricket, wow. What are the strengths I need to play cricket? I'm dictating this. I don't want to write this down, but I'm dictating this. What are the strengths that I need to play cricket? Who are the top 10 players in cricket in Nigeria? And who are the top 10 players, top cricket players in the world? As a matter of fact, yes. some of them may already have the answer to some of your questions. So, is there anybody here who answered the questions for the homework last week that I set? Right, uh, right, let's get a balance of government college and in park. So, go ahead, so you ask the questions. You can, you can so, ask. Hands up, hands and so, up, who, who did the homework? Oh, there was an homework from last week. Yeah, I gave you homework. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, for all. Okay. All right. So, see, there are see me. Yes. 
some examples from self-confidence and critical thinking. So this is what you will do in addition to your assignment. So this will be the third assignment now. Now, this assignment, uh, you can't copy each other. Just, just look out for practical examples that you can apply self-confidence and critical thinking. Practical examples that you can apply over this next one week. Practical examples that you will apply self-confidence and critical thinking. Your answer might even be on the field today. Practical examples of how you can apply self-confidence and critical thinking. Did we get that? Did you write it down? Everybody is meant to write this down so that you won't say you forgot. Yes, sir. Write it down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what, what, what Mr. Lachner is asking. Listen! Listen, what Mr. Lachner is asking you all is, in the next week, show examples of where you've shown self-confidence. Where you've had to use self-confidence in the next week. Have you got that clear? Yes, sir. Victor, I will start from you next week. Is that clear? And, and I'm not kidding on you. I also understand that there is a trade of potential leadership upon you. And a couple of people look up to you. So when people look up to you, you get to face people positively. Do you understand? Do we all understand? Yes, sir. And there are different all marks um, for either leadership or followership on different persons per time. And we get to nurture that until you become mature players. So thank you so much, everyone. I enjoyed this with you. So round of applause for Come on, boy, let's go!